Hello, I'm BJ Arnett, and this is BJA Today. Well, as you can hear the buzz in the room, something is happening. It is all about Christian business people. This is the U.S. Christian Chamber of Commerce right here in Orlando, Florida. And I've met a new friend, a new brother, Thank a you. new part of my family. Yes. And this is Paul Jiduku. Paul Jiduku. Jiduku. We've been practicing that for like 10 minutes, and I still didn't get it. Okay but it's okay because it's still my brother. Yeah. Paul, I wanted to talk to you about something that really resonated with me when we were standing in the hallway. We were talking about family and the difference of family in the United States and the, and the family that you come from. You were raised in a village by the village. Yes. Talk to us about what family really looks like. Yeah, because for us, where I come from, uh, thank you, first of all, I want to say thank you mm -hmm. for allowing me and giving me this opportunity to share my story. Thank you for your kindness. Well, uh, where I come from, um, the saying that it takes a village to raise a child, it is so true, and I am a product of that story. Um, I'm told my mom abandoned me as a kid, mm -hmm. so the whole village relied together and started taking care of me, so I became a child of the village. Mm. Uh, today, it takes me more, almost three hours or four hours to walk a mile from one house to the other because I have to greet every house. I have to greet every person oh because I am I'm a child for every home. So I cannot, I cannot leave one home without greeting because even at my age, I'm still a child to, to, the, whole, to the whole village. Yes. So everyone in the village, everyone older is my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Everyone younger is an uncle, an aunt, mm -hmm. and by the way, there are so many that I don't even know their <laughs> names because they are either uncle, aunt, or grandfather, and if you mention their name, you are punished for disrespecting them. It's either uncle, auntie, grandfather, So you, you don't say their name. You don't. You address them as auntie and uh, uncle. Uncle, yeah. If you really have to make, a mention, make mention of the name, you have to go like auntie, so and so, oh. uncle, so and so. At my age, I don't remember my teacher's names because it is a taboo. It's my teacher. It is my teacher. Yeah, it's my teacher. And, and you know, just speaking of that, and you know, I'm a professor, yes. and I recognize there's, even in that understanding, there is almost an elevation that just is not existing in the United States for the teacher, the professor, with the family and the students. That's a big difference in your culture and the United States. Why is that? Why is it so important to put people on such a platform in your culture? I, I think for us, we taught respect as one of the values that still remain is up to date. My, uh, what we would call, I think what you'd call here grade two or grade three teacher still yes. lives in the same village with me. Mm. But I would tell you genuinely, if I am going to greet my teacher, I put myself together. At my age, I have to go respectfully and everyone knows that is my teacher. Mm. Um, I, uh, the lady that helped uh, my grandfather when I was growing up, I know her as my mom, but I cannot tell you her name and I've lived with her for 40 years. Oh but my I goodness. do not know her name. I only know her as, as my teacher. mom. That's your mom. mom or my teacher. So you can't mention, you can't mention name. their name. In my area, in my tribe, respect is very, very important. I love that. So in the United States, I, I was raised in Kentucky, in Louisville. And I knew that family was the entire neighborhood. That was the neighborhood that raised me. So if I did something wrong, a block away from my parents, my parents knew it before I got home. And I was reprimanded before I got an inch down the street because the lady who lived at the corner was looking out of her window to see what I was doing and why. And she, when I did something great, she'd step out on her porch and she'd literally applaud us as we were children. But when we did something wrong, she'd call us to the porch to talk to us about it. There's, there's something so great about that because that's where I felt the I was raised by the village. But yours was very different in the level of respect and the level of understanding. Why is it important to give that ultimate respect to these people who help raise you? 
I think I like like the Bible says for us as believers that raise up a child the way he should go, mm -hmm. and when he has grown, he shall not depart from it. Mm -hmm. Now your story is a little similar but different. For my case, if I did something wrong in the neighborhood, the matter was settled in the neighborhood. That oh. meant anyone in the neighborhood had the right to take a wipe and work on you right there because yes. you are. Oh no, we have that similarity. <laughs> Yes, we have that similarity. I didn't mention that because I didn't want y'all to know that. Uh, yes, I got spanked all the way down the street. It started with the first lady who saw it, right? Yeah. And then it went all the way down. And every one of them had the right. Yes. They were given the right to what we consider today in the United States as something that should not be done. This was part of proper rearing to make sure that we were training up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart. That's scriptural. Yeah, and, and for us, I think it's so, even even when it comes to government, because we're raised up with respect uh, in a home or respect for authority, mm -hmm. that even when it comes either to the police or the government forces or wherever mm -hmm. you're dealing with, you always deal with them with respect. Mm -hmm. So even if, my, if a police officer stopped me today and they were wrong, the first thing is I respect them for who they are, even if they are wrong. I am not going to be rude. I am going to speak to them respectfully, even if they were wrong, because it's something we're raised with. And uh, we know it's it is it's different, but it's amazing. It's, it's amazing and it is correct. It is yes. biblically correct. Yeah. The other thing that I, I have to talk to you about yes. is that now that you have been raised by the village, the village is a part of the command that God has given you to take care of. Yes. So did you say to my husband and I? Yes that you have 700 widows that you take care of. Yes. Some where about 5,000 children. Yes. And then what was the other group? Yes, yeah, so, so we have, so we have uh, uh, these widows, by the way, these widows, uh, being a kid, uh, I ate their food. I, so I had they the right. help raise you. Yeah, they help raise me because I had the right, as they had the right to discipline me, I also had the right to eat in every home growing oh, so up. You, oh, my goodness. So you <laughs> so just went from house to house having yeah, a so, meal. Yeah, so Praise independent God. where lunch phoned me, I will have lunch there and I will have maybe two lunches or whatever the case. So now I am back in the village. Those people took care of me. Mm. And now God has called me back to take care of them. So uh, with the widows, with the kids, uh, with the community at large, we're providing health care. We oh, have my it. work to bring in doctors mm. to treat them, mm -hmm. either do dental care, whatever it takes. Uh, when they are sick, they now call my number. And uh, uh, we have, like I said, we have 5,000 kids in that community that we are reaching for and we're doing different things, whether it's health care, education, providing clean water. Uh, I'm back in the You're very taking place. care of them. Yes. And I, I have to end with this thought. Yes. When a village trains up a child in the way that they should go. Yes. So that when they are old, they do not depart. Yes. That child comes back as an adult. Uh, yes. And raises up the next generation. It's the return of it's investment. It's the return on, of on the investment. investment of the love of God. Yes. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm BJ Arnett. This is Paul. And, and this is now my new brother. Thank you. Don't we look alike? <laughs> and the same height. <laughs> and we're the same height. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. We thank you. Thank you. And just understand that you have a responsibility to be God's village. Yes. No one else's. God's village. Yes. And it will bring God's return. Yes. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank God you bless so you, brother. Much. That was so kind of you. <laughs> Thank wow. you. That